Okay, thank you all for joining. As usual, I am here talking about uh, productivity. I think I have around 20 minutes and I'll try to show you Gen AI in action in the context of productivity and efficiency. All right, so quiz. Everyone does Google search. What are the top three keywords globally? Take a guess. Top three keywords. I'm showing you the volume as well. This is as of March or April. First, second, third. Okay, I'll give you a clue. It has nothing to do with AI. Very nice. Someone said YouTube. That's perfect. The topmost is YouTube. Next, Facebook. Very nice. And third, WhatsApp. Not just WhatsApp. WhatsApp web. What is interesting there? Can anyone tell me? Someone went to Google and searched for Google. I don't know what they were thinking. So it really is worrying trend looking at the IQ of humanity. Anyway, coming back to our topic, I'm going to talk about Gen AI in corporate context. So if you search for it, you will get lots of uh, hits. But broadly, these are the players. And if you filter out those which are business oriented, some of them will get eliminated because some of them are very business specific related to only their app. Some of them are not business related at all in the true sense of the word. For example, Adobe is only for creative crowd. And uh, yes, Google is there with workspace, but they are lagging behind. So finally, when you filter everything out in a generic sense, applicable to everyone at a large scale across departments, across levels of seniority and industries, only chat GPT and Copilot are left. I'm sure all of you have already played with both. So I'm going to show you some good stuff about it, some good things, some guidance, some best practices, and some common mistakes, which I've seen people doing all the time. This must be my 130th session or something like that on Copilot. So it's not only doing sessions, a lot of customer interaction. I see a lot of things happening right way, wrong way. So this is a consolidated capsule of what I've learned so far. All right. Now, when we talk about Gen AI and all of your IT people, so you must be getting a lot of requests from non-IT people as well about introducing AI. Whether it is genuinely required or not, that's a different issue, but it's at least fashionable. So people want it in their resume or they want to show, show off that I'm doing something in Gen AI. Fair enough. But these two broad categories always get mixed up. For example, Microsoft Copilot is supposed to work in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. You know that. And there, people are trying to develop their own language models. That doesn't work. So we have to segregate where is end user play, where existing LLM is going to be used, and whatever data you give as a part of the prompt, that data is not going to be used for training anything. If that was the case, everyone would have sued Microsoft by now for privacy. So that is never going to happen. That's not going to happen, and that's by design. So many people are trying to do the dev part in Copilot, which is never going to work. Example, I have some SharePoint site containing all HR policies, and I try to ask Copilot. It may give you answers because it has data access, but it's not going to be precise because it has data access to a superset. It is not going to restrict itself only to that. So if you have your own data and you want to build a chatbot on top of it, you have to use the Azure OpenAI path, not Copilot path or whatever AI path, it may not be Microsoft, non-Microsoft also, but from Copilot, you cannot expect your data to be used for creating a model. That's not the objective, that's not the design, that's not the intention. Because Copilot is a word which is overused now, it started with Microsoft, now it has become like Bisleri, right? Everyone has a Copilot. Correct? Panwala kabhi Copilot aegaabhi. So, now, which copilot is the question? And to confuse matters even further, Microsoft has also have so many copilots amongst themselves. It's really confusing. But broadly speaking, whatever copilot you have in mind, everyone is trying to compare it with Chat GPT. Right? The idea is very simple. Microsoft is going to Chat GPT free. Mein karke deta. Fair enough. But then, if that was the case, why would Microsoft spend money to make that logo? It's not only that money, right? It's a lot of things which are going behind the scenes, but we'll go into that later. This diagram or picture itself is wrong. There are two co-pilots, at least two in the context of end user. And then there is chat GPT. So what is the second one, anyone? First is the M365 co-pilot, which is $30. Hota hai. Second one, which Not GitHub. GitHub is 
this is ha huh? no 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 i am talking end user public copilot there is a free copilot right copilot dot what microsoft.com yeah or bing.com/chat whatever that is the public version of copilot and then there is a paid version of copilot which is called microsoft 365 copilot and of course both of them are based on chat gpt anyway so what are the differences between these is very important to understand so this is a busy table but i will demystify it first thing is if you want to use corporate data the only choice is m365 copilot other two don't have access to it yes some or smart person will copy paste data there but that's exposed so avoid that now because we are worried about that most people or many i wouldn't say most many organizations have blocked all kinds of generative ai in the network that is also a bad idea because then you are promoting shadow it people are going to bypass it in some other way so don't do that if you block you are promoting unwanted uncertified stuff which will never be known to you and people will go to random sites they essentially will be phishing sites and you are compounding the problem rather than solving it restriction mindlessly never works so what do we have to do suppose you have microsoft 365 copilot then do you have to use free copilot so they have to understand the difference underlying there is an llm that is made by openai that's chat gpt no doubt about that but when you use pre copilot it is using open ai's llm so data is going there but it is sanitizing it before it goes there and it is not stored and so on i'll tell you what it does and what it doesn't so that's what it means security to some extent is there but when you use microsoft 365 copilot whatever queries you are going to put there whether your data or upfront queries are not going to open ai at all very important thing to understand so oh, banaya kisne open ai ne llm kidhar hai in open ai but then it is not going to open ai then where is it going so microsoft has a private instance of it which open ai staff does not have access to and that is where it is going why because whatever microsoft is doing with that llm has to be following your corporate policies of geolocation compliance privacy if the data is on open ai's data center they have no control so whatever you do through microsoft 365 copilot is actually a private instance and it will follow all security compliance policies which you have set in your organization already now another query people have is where is that data going is it going to be kept yes m365 copilot chats are definitely kept if the user wants they can delete it but it's literally corporate data remember so someone in audit someone in compliance may want to look at what was done how do we keep email communication for 10 years or whatever same concept applies here so it will be available for e discovery or whatever compliance issues you may come later another part is this is a new tool people are not used to it so it would like to know how people are using it and can anything be done to improve it so you get a lot of telemetry as well so if required the data is available if you don't want it of course you can delete it so if whatever you put in chat will that be used for training the llm so the answer for pre copilot as well as paid copilot is no okay for chat gpt they have different policies not under your control in that sense pricing you already know customizability and all that we'll go into later the broad thing you have to understand is even if you have microsoft 365 copilot please encourage people to use the free copilot why because they are not competing with each other m365 copilot is designed for something else whereas this one is designed for something else so let me explain that first that's why i'm saying don't block allow copilot with commercial data protection what does that mean if you go to microsoft copilot.microsoft.com which is the completely free version what you will see is copilot the precise and imaginative all those things it will show you gpt4 and if you log in using azure ad id you will see two tabs work and web web means the public version of copilot and work means if you have m365 copilot that so in one place you can switch between the two and that's a good thing because certain things i want to have inward focus with my data being accessed this is grounded in my data some other things i want to do outside without touching my data 
So you can switch between the two very easily. This web version of Copilot, when you log in using Azure AD, you will see a green button called protected. It says your data is protected. What does that exactly mean? It means this. And if you scan this QR code, it will take you to the documentation of that. So there is another practice I am following nowadays because if something is interesting and I can't show you all the details, put the QR code right there. That makes more sense. Now, how do you create QR code? You may have 20 web pages, right? How do you create QR code for any web page? Another quiz. No, I'm not talking about tools. I'm talking about a native feature. So this is a simple browser page. Right click. There's a native edge feature. And that gives us, that brings us to another best practice. By default, all of your organizations will have Windows and Edge installed. But if you see how many people are actually using Edge, it's again left to personal preference. Don't do that. Yes, you can give personal preference, but if people are working on something Microsoft, it absolutely makes sense to use Edge. For non-Microsoft things, you can do whatever you want. Why? Because Edge has very sophisticated policies which you can control using endpoint management and many other things. What does this do? Basically, whatever data you're putting, maybe you're copy pasting a Word document and putting it in that public chat because you don't have the paid version. Fair enough. But that data is safe. It will not be saved. It will not be used. It will be encrypted and you will not get ads. Now, this is another concern all of you have. I'm sure you know the answer, but many business users may not know the answer. So, idea is very simple. Whatever is generated through Microsoft paid version of Copilot is protected by Microsoft. So, customers are indemnified by Microsoft for this purpose. So, if there is a litigation, Microsoft can't prevent people from litigating, but whatever that effort and cost, Microsoft will bear. I don't know of any case studies where this has actually happened and what was the outcome, but technically you have actually signed this with Microsoft. Again, the QR code to this detail is there because this is a very common question I get in almost every session. That's why I'm doing it up front. The next thing we want to understand is um, memory in chat GPT. It is not yet there in M365 Copilot. So what does it mean? You use chat GPT, you create multiple chats and talk about it. Now, if there is something you want to inform chat GPT about something which is common, it's called system message. Where you say, I am a doctor, I work in XYZ field, I am a researcher, some kind of things and about who you are and what kind of knowledge, what kind of domain you are in, then what kind of responses generally do you expect? Verbose or bulleted list, those kind of generic guidance you can give in system messages. That is already there from day one. But now we have something called memory. And what does that do? It remembers beyond whatever you have given, it remembers context across chats without you having to go to the system message. So I have just taken an example of what I have been doing. Notice I just chatted with it yesterday to try to create some slides. So it's saying this guy conducts session for CIOs. I prefer purchase links in India, Microsoft 365, I was studio. This is not one day. This has happened over three, four months. It has remembered some key topics about myself, which it will be used in responding to me in future. If I don't like any of them or if it's a misguided thing, then of course I can delete it. Before we go further, I also want to talk about Adobe because many of you may have creative departments, branding, marketing teams. Absolutely, you should explore Adobe from creative point of view because this is a generic term like Copilot and it has been introduced in all types of Adobe apps and it's really amazing. I myself use Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects and uh, so what does it do? Now, for example, what I'm going to do after this session is this is getting recorded with my laptop mic, which is always pathetic. And then there is room echo, right? So all this in one click, it will remove and give me clean audio. Earlier, you had to know something in audio engineering and tweak it and it would take a long time. And very soon it is coming into system. Some other third parties have already started doing. When you are creating videos, you need illustrations. So one of those third party sites called Envato has integrated with Adobe. In my editing software itself, it looks at the current frame, analyzes it using AI and automatically gives me relevant illustrations to choose. That saves enormous amount of time. So many of these things are natural extensions to what we do. So the underlying thing we have to understand is it's not for someone else. In your own context, I'm sure you'll find lots of examples or scenarios or use cases where it will enhance what you do. 
and Firefly, if you are interested in text to image, is absolutely outstanding. It has text to image, generative fill, and templates, and many, many more things. So, I'll give you one example. Uh, these are the types of things it can generate. So, you can give some prompt, but prompt is just one thing. It says, should it look artistic or photographic? Then you can upload an image for a reference and say, make it like this. Not that image. Whatever I am asking for, it should look like that. So you can put someone's painting and say, make this look like that. Then again, different styles, visual styles. Then different effects. And as though that is not enough, all types of camera angles. All this is the input. So people who want to create good art, this is an ocean, literally. Of course, Adobe is not the only thing. Copilot also is very good at it. Now that's where the difference comes. The Microsoft 365 Copilot cannot generate images and cannot understand images. And many people are trying that and failing. And they want to go to the other Copilot and that is blocked. That is why I'm saying both Copilots have a purpose to play and they are complementary, not competing. To keep both on with guidance. This is the prompt I gave and this is the image I got. Normally you would have thought it will do some didactic thing like there is image here and picture there and show some rays. No. Very smart. This zero manipulation I have done as it is I have downloaded. So it's out of the world. Now there is another aspect which we need to work on because this is a costly thing. Whichever Microsoft, non-Microsoft, Google. All these AIs are never going to be free. Please understand. Completely free. Because there is a hardware cost involved. There is a lot of bandwidth and infrastructure required. So there will always be paid versions and there may be some limits also on daily usage and stuff like that. For example, this one, even if you have Adobe subscription, you have to live within those credits, a thousand credits a day, something like that. It's quite reasonable, but it's never going to be free. So whatever money you are spending, of course you need to understand the cost benefit analysis. How to do that, I will show you a little later. So I'll give you a few examples which are not run of the mill in the sense, go to Word and ask it to create a Word document. That's a very dumb demo. So I'll show you something more sophisticated but absolutely feasible. So here is an example. I have a CV of a developer, two years experience. And I have a JD for a project manager where I need four years experience. They are two completely separate documents. Then I go to a third blank document in Word and ask it to say, check if this guy is suitable for this. That's it. No copy paste involved because this copilot has access to your data. So you don't need to open the file also. Just give reference to the file. It will put two and two together and it gives me everything about it. It's saying lacks experience because there's a two-year gap. So that's how if I wanted to and if I didn't want a verbose description like this, I could have said put all the parameters in a table and show me. It would have done that happily. In fact, that table which I showed you earlier, earlier, Chat GPT and other co-pilots is an output of co-pilot. So it's really smart. And if you go to Chat GPT version, it will even show you the code which it used to generate that. It gives you Python code. And nowadays, Chat GPT paid version is also capable of creating Word Excel PowerPoint file directly. Earlier, people used to go to Chat GPT, create a slideshow or whatever request. That would give bullets. And then we were copy pasting it in PowerPoint, which is a disaster. Or slightly smarter people would say, give me VBA code to do that. But again, it will still be a black and white slide. So now it can actually generate PPT, Word and Excel if you ask for it. But of course, it doesn't have any integration with your corporate data. You will still have to put the files manually in OneDrive or Teams. All right, so there is one example. Now let's take cross document example. Here is an example. I have a PPT where we have corporate goals, four goals for this year. Okay, separate document. Now I have a partnership proposal I'm entertaining and I want to check before I approve this, is it aligned with our corporate goals? So same story, say check if this proposal is aligned with this. Now it actually gives me a table. I did not ask for it because there are four goals, four rows plus total ranking and a description as to why it led to those results. And finally it's giving me a conclusion also saying what kind of alignment are we talking about? So this is the level to which it can work now. And all this is out of the box, no customization whatsoever. Now, another very important thing which we have to understand is uh, the 
copilot in excel is not fully evolved it's still called preview it's in beta and currently whatever it does is quite primitive it just does conditional formatting calculated columns and some small things so as a power user people don't like it but what they miss out is excel data can be analyzed not necessarily in excel it can be analyzed in word also so here is an example so this is balance sheet data in excel standard and i just copied it and pasted it if you ask excel copilot to work on this it will not work properly because it requires a raw data kind of table means only column 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 this is like a cross tab with sub total that format is currently not supported it will come later but that doesn't mean you get disappointed you copy this you paste it in word blank document go to word copilot and now i'm asking it to analyze this balance sheet and assess and now it gives me this it actually generates the whole thing out of the box and this is just a screenshot but let me open the actual file and show you what it did save time i just did that demo in the morning so this is the file it generated out of the box liquidity for four five types of ratios there were no ratios in my excel data it calculated them created a table and it's explaining each ratio in the context of that data and finally it will give me some conclusion as well understood so just because something doesn't happen in excel doesn't mean it is not possible it's very much a copilot thing and all this data is protected if you do this on chat gpt this is a problem in fact many global customers suffered because everyone got excited with chat gpt everyone's finance department went and copy pasted their balance sheet before they were published and lot of companies suffered samsung being the biggest all right now there's another copilot for finance where very often finance people do reconciliation and a lot of time is spent in that so here is sample data this is actual expenses and this is budget and i want to reconcile so you just go there and say reconcile it will pick up which are the parameters which have to be matched matching columns it will find out the numeric value it will find out and give you a nice report it will also add the text to it and done in few seconds you get the reconciliation to try it out with your data this is an add in another amazing thing which is there is surveys i am sure all of us do sort some sort of surveys we have surveys for in uh, google survey or survey monkey whatever tool you use now if you go to google of course the very sophisticated survey system forms but google does have ai but yet they have not introduced it look at this in microsoft you go to forms and i am asking you to create a customer satisfaction survey for a fashion brand which sells premium linen shirts that is the description now all of you who have done surveys you must have learned the hard way that it is not just about putting questions and answers it's an art and science in itself so it understands all that and it created a nice survey for me by the way the qr code also comes nowadays as a part of forms because very often when you are doing hybrid meetings i have a survey to do people who are on the meeting i can put the link but people who are in person how do i give them the link so now it shows the qr code and it displays the result parallelly like for that's the reason we used to use mentimeter and stuff like that because this wasn't there so forms has a present option which shows qr code and this side by side all right and now as though that is not enough survey is ready after that it says do you want to invite people who have not responded because invariably half the people will not respond so now is going to allow you to create a mailer or whatever reminder and there is a copilot there so now i'm saying rewrite with copilot it created text in the context of the survey automatically so wherever possible copilot is coming in so from that point of view it is evolving very rapidly what was there in day 1 versus what is there in now literally every week it is cropping up somewhere or the other so that's about forms i was talking about the roi and cost so i have created a very simple calculator which if you like you can use whatever i am showing you right now you try your own use cases and think of use cases which are broadly applicable it's not three people who are going to benefit the entire mass larger audience most users should be benefiting from it now once you have that what do you want to do you tabulate it like this so these are suggested columns so for example recap emails is very very powerful 
works perfectly. Everyone is going to save at least 10 minutes out of it every day because that's the first thing we do. And there is an intangible benefit. You often forget to quantify the intangible part because it's not only the time which I saved in searching for emails. Because it is going to collate mails which came three days apart, but they are the same thread, is going to give me better quality communication capability. So all those intangible things also put a number to them. Right now I have taken one user and you think a typical user will do it how many times? This is every day, so 20. Summarize documents only five times in a week, month. Like that you do and a simple multiplication will give you this. So these five, four, whatever, gave me this much time saving per month. Now convert it to hours and days and then assume 50,000 monthly salary and how much of this proportionately 3,000 and how much is the cost for Like that, you put your numbers, I am not forcing numbers on you, but that will give you a tangible way of assessing what is happening. And maybe you'll be able to justify it and purchase it, but that's wrong. Because afterwards, someone has to implement it with not one, but thousand people. And that is the thing which is completely getting missed today. So buying Gen AI in any context is easy, but you have to have a method to find best practices and disseminate them to everyone. So now question for all of you. What is the biggest benefit of Gen AI in this context? Number one question. And who is the biggest beneficiary? So I'll give you a hint. I asked this to chat GPT. I know. There is spelling mistake and grammatical error. So there are two mistakes we do when we are working with chat GPT. We think this topic will chat GPT understand. That's a very stupid thought because it has ingested everything which is published. No subject, no language, no word in any language it doesn't understand. So don't have that down. So I asked chat GPT, what do you not understand? And it gave me 10 things. This is very revealing. Understood? So what is essentially it means is it understands everything you can ever imagine. And every customer I've gone to, I've asked topics from them. Their experts have asked for topics and it has given answers which literally impressed everyone. So please try it out. So now with this hint, you tell me what is the biggest benefit of OpenAI or ChatGPT or Copilot. The concept is one common mistake is happening globally. If I have Copilot, I'm going to use it in my context whatever my context is, finance, HR, marketing, XYZ, ABC, that, was, that is a no-brainer. Of course you do that. But please understand that you can now use that, leverage that to explore other topics which you will never know as well as your core topic and expand your horizon. The cross-functional part of it is the biggest benefit. Functional domain, obviously you'll do. Nothing great there. But if you are an HR and you have never looked at finance seriously because you thought it's complicated, now is the time to do it and ask related questions to expand your horizon beyond your imagination. And that's the biggest benefit. And of course, everyone can do that irrespective of which industry and what role. So with that, I am going to stop talking and thank you for that.